Okay, so welcome to today's session for mental health and we are just going to look at uh, management of schizophrenia. So we'll go straight into the session. Now, when it comes to management of schizophrenia, so when it comes to management of schizophrenia, of course you need to understand uh, that schizophrenia uh, has uh, drugs that can be used to treat uh, a patient or an individual who has a schizophrenia. So the first thing that you always need to start with on any management is of course the M's. And in terms of the M's, you can of course come up with even uh, four M's of course. And some of the M's that you can come up uh, in schizophrenia, you can say uh, to promote a quick recovery. You can say to relieve symptoms of schizophrenia. Apart from that, you can say to promote a safe environment for the patient. And uh, of course, you can also talk about to meet the physical needs of the patient. Among other aims, some of the aims you can also talk about to prevent injuries uh, of the patient during uh, aggressive phase uh, as they are having schizophrenia. So these, those are some of the aims that you can talk about. And of course, after aims, the bigger heading is of course medical management. Under medical management, you need to do two things, which is investigations, then you move on to treatment. And on investigations, you are supposed to come up with at least five investigations. So among us, the investigations that we can do, of course, a history taking point, you can say the patient will present with a history of of uh, mental illness in the family so the patient may literally just have a history of mental illness in the family and that is one of the history because we understand to say mental health conditions like uh, schizophrenia uh, can also be genetic then apart from history of mental health in the family i mean history of uh, yeah a mental illness in the family uh, the other point is a physical examination point so you can say during physical examination the patient will present with hallucinations and the delusions so we know to say uh, schizophrenic uh, patients may present with positive as well as negative uh, symptoms and of course um, you, you need also to understand schizophrenia itself for you to relate to these terms. But what we mean is that during physical examination, this patient will present with, um, uh, with the hallucinations and the delusions. And then from there now, other investigations that can be done, of course, we can do radiologicals. So radiologicals like um, a CT scan, which is computed the tomography. So computed tomography uh, will be done to rule out neurological abnormalities. So computed tomography can be done to rule out neurological abnormalities. We can also do MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. And magnetic resonance imaging is also done to rule out structural lesions in the brain. You can also do other investigations like um, EEG. So electroencephalogram, so electroencephalogram will show abnormal electrical discharge in the brain. Apart from that, you can also do a RPR, rapid plasma reagent. And rapid plasma reagent is done to rule out syphilis, which may cause mental confusion because we understand to say untreated syphilis may result in mental confusion so all you need on investigations are just five investigations and we have talked about more than five so once you have five investigations then you can move on um, to treatment okay and in terms of treatment, we understand to say this is a, a, a psychotic dis, uh, disorder. So here you are supposed to give or mention at least three specific drugs that can be used to treat schizophrenia. And amongst these drugs, we can talk about, of course, the first drug uh, that we can prescribe in schizophrenia is clopromazine. So clopromazine is one of the drugs that can be used in schizophrenia, mania, even anxiety disorders, and many other. 
So with clopromazine, uh, the dose is 25 milligrams three times a day, or you can give 75 milligrams at night. So that is the dose for schizophrenia. And uh, the, uh, the mode of action of, of um, rather the mode of action of clopromazine. So the mode of action of clopromazine is that uh, it blocks the dopaminergic receptors. So by blocking the dopaminergic receptors, this reduces dopamine levels in the brain. Because we know to say in schizophrenia, because of those positive symptoms, we see a rise in dopamine. But, uh, and that is, what we, 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 that is why we see uh, positive symptoms in schizophrenia. But in depression, because there is less dopamine, that's why we cannot give antipsychotic drugs in uh, depressive disorders. So that is the mode of action. It blocks the dopaminergic receptors, hence reducing dopamine levels. Then when it comes to the side effects of clopromazine, it has side effects such as uh, extrapyramidal effects, drowsiness, so you need to mention at least two side effects, so extrapyramidal effects as well as drowsiness, hypotension, tachycardia, and many others as well. And of course, when we talk about some, uh, uh, some nursing uh, implication, uh, you can uh, talk about observing extrapyramidal effects and attend to any extrapyramidal effects such as uh, face or neck spasms which may interfere with swallowing or breathing. Then of course, apart from um, uh, clopromazine, the other drug that we can give is flufenazine. So flufenazine also has the same mode of action as um, uh, clopromazine, which is, of course, blocking uh, the dopaminergic receptors. Then uh, the dose of flufenazine is that we can give, uh, we can give uh, 12.5 milligrams, uh, which can be given a, as a test dose. But then after the test dose of 12.5 milligrams, you can give 100 milligrams uh, once daily IM. And this is given at intervals of 14 to 35 days. So this one, that is the interval that you give it of intervals of 14 to 35 days. And you need to understand that, of course, flufenazine, which is also known as modicate, is not indicated uh, in children. It's contraindicated and it's not recommended at all because of its effects. But of course, when it comes to the side effects of flufenazine, uh, it has extrapyramidal effects. Apart from that, akathisia as well as dystonic uh, reactions. Uh, and also, uh, it has also other side effects like hypo hypotension. It may result in hypotension. So when it comes to... Um, to the uh, nursing implication, of course, uh, you can talk about um, administering uh, administering the drug with caution, especially in individuals who abuse narcotics, because it may worsen uh, symptoms. Um, I mean, it may worsen side effects of the drugs. So a patient who is on other narcotic drugs should be given with this drug with caution because the side effects may worsen the third drug that we can talk about of course is haloperidol so when we talk about haloperidol uh, the dose is of course okay so the dose is uh, 50 milligrams every four weeks so this one the patient only receives it once in four weeks uh, or once in a month in short and of course, uh, the mode of action of uh, haloperidol is that um, it acts by also blocking the dopamine receptors in the brain, hence reducing uh, levels of dopamine. Then when it comes to the side effects of haloperidol, uh, there is pain on the injection site as well as hypotension. So apart from that, uh, the nursing implication, uh, you can of course talk about um, avoiding abrupt discontinuation of the drug. So you need to avoid abrupt discontinuation of the drug because it may result in rebound 
reactions. So the patient may actually suffer from uh, adverse reactions because you have just discontinued the drug um, abruptly. So those are some of the drugs that we can mention. All you need is to mention at least the three specific drugs. And once you mention three drugs, you then you are ready to move on to the nursing management. So of course, when we talk about uh, the nursing management, the first heading that we can talk about is of course the heading of the environment. So some of the points you can talk about on environment, of course, you can say I will nurse the patient or I will admit the patient in the psychiatric ward for easy observation as well as effective treatment. The other point you can put there, you can also say I will ensure that the environment is noise free to prevent agitating or avoid agitating the patient. The other point, of course, you can also talk about um, uh, to say I will remove dangerous objects from the environment to prevent self-harm as well as to others. You can also talk about other points such as I will open nearby windows to promote circulation uh, in the ward. You can also say I will ensure that the restraints such as the straight jackets are available in uh, for use whenever the patient becomes uh, aggressive so those are some of the points that you can talk about on the uh, environment in this case among others of course okay then apart from that uh, the other point that you can talk about i mean the other heading is of course nest patient therapeutic relationship so that is very important. You need to ensure that the patient uh, feels safe and they are able to also uh, be able to interact and verbalize their concerns or whatever they may be experiencing. That's why this heading is very important. So on nurse patient therapeutic relationship here, the first point you can say, I will greet the patient and introduce myself to gain cooperation whenever I'm attending to the patient. The other point you can say, I will sit quietly with the patient to promote sense of trust. So you don't have to show it like you're arguing with the patient who has schizophrenia. This easily makes them to become aggressive. The other point you can say, I will not agree with the patient's grandiose delusions so as to promote reality of based topics. So you don't agree to the patient. If the patient have uh, grandiose, uh, like maybe it could be uh, persecution uh, type of grandiosity or any different of grandiosity where the patient believes it to be someone who they are not or they believe in something to be pursuing them when there is literally nothing. So you shouldn't agree with them if they tell to say me I'm rich when they are actually not rich. No, don't agree with them. So bring the reality to them. This way you also promote reality in their head so that they're able to think uh, properly. The other point, of course, you can also say, I will involve uh, interpersonal activities and explain the actual situation to help bring the patient back to reality. So involve the patient in interpersonal activities, activities that makes them to interact with others. This helps them bring them back into reality. The other point, of course, you can say I will avoid touching the patient without alerting them uh, so as to prevent aggressive uh, behavior. Of course, the other uh, point you can talk about um, reinforcing the patient positively for uh, positive and voluntary behavior as this promotes, promotes the self-esteem and also promotes the recovery. So uh, these are some of the points uh, you can put uh, on this particular heading and apart from that of course you can also add many other there are a lot for example you can say i will use a low tone voice when talking to the patient to avoid arguments since the patient uh, with schizophrenia may be uh, may be aggressive 
So all those points, you can still put them on next patient therapeutic uh, relationship. Then from there, now you need to talk about sleep and rest. So when we talk about sleep and rest, what points can you add on this particular heading? You can say, I will ensure that the environment is free from noise by advising uh, members of staff to reduce their voices so as to prevent, um, so as to prevent agitating the patient. You can also talk about uh, involving the patient um, in group activities during the day so as to promote rest in the night so that when you promote rest in the night it means that this patient will sleep rather than them uh, uh, making noise or or shouting at the nest because they're having some hallucination of some sort but then if they are uh, you promote activities during the day they will sleep in the night and then the night becomes uh, peaceful Apart from that, the other point you can say, I will do or perform related procedures in blocks so as to allow the patient to have enough time of rest. So if you do TPR, uh, medication uh, and uh, many others, of course, you do them at once, it avoids you over disturbing this patient so that this patient can have enough time of rest. Apart from that, of course, you can also um, uh, you can also talk about administering uh, benzodiazepines like diazepam so as to calm the patient and this promotes rest. So these are some of the points that you can put on sleep and rest. And from there, the next heading is of course uh, cognitive therapy. So with the cognitive therapy, you are now trying to teach the patient about uh, the, the, the thoughts, the thinking, so that you bring them uh, to reality. So on this particular heading, what points can you put? So one of the points you can say, I will teach the patient how to control thought distortions that are considered to be factors uh, to be disturbing the patient's mental status. So you teach them how to control thought distortions. You teach them to say, oh, if you start seeing this, uh, you can call out for the nurse or you can start taking deep breaths because this, whatever you are seeing, does not literally exist or whatever you are hearing because patients with schizophrenia they may have auditory hallucinations like they are hearing voices so you advise them how to control such and also make it clear to say this actually does not exist then the other point of course you can say i will teach the patient how to identify disinfection or patterns so as to reinforce adaptable adaptable behaviors so you advise the patient to say if you see people running away from you meaning your behavior is becoming bad so when you advise them to identify that whenever they see people running away from them they will avoid because they will know to say i think my behavior is now becoming bad and this promotes their cognitive aspect you can also uh, talk about um uh, you can say I will teach the patient on uh, uh, behavioral mod modification uh, uh, activities such as interacting with others as this promotes a good cognitive function. And apart from that, you can say I will not agree with the patient's thoughts if at all they do not exist so as to promote reality. So those points, you can uh, put them on cognitive therapy, of course, among others. Then from cognitive therapy, of course, now you can talk about um, observations. So when we talk about observations, first of all, you can say, I will check the vitals such as temperature, pulse, respirations, and blood pressure to detect any abnormalities. Apart from that, you can say, I'll continue observing uh, the side effects of antipsychotic drugs such as, such as Parkinsonism so as to attend to the patient 
effectively. So with Parkinsonism as a side effect is common with antipsychotic drugs where you may see this patient having uncoordinated uh, nerve function and you may see it from the frequent shaking of the hands or body without their control because of the effects of the drug and this may damage the nerves so if this happens it means that this drug needs to be discontinued and uh, you switch to another drug then apart from that you can say uh, i will monitor the patient's uh, degree of uh, delusions and hallucinations so as to give uh, sufficient care you can also say i will continue performing a mental state examination so as to continue monitoring the patient's recovery process. So these and many other points will still apply. From there now, the next heading is, of course, nutrition. So now what can we talk about on, um, on nutrition? So on nutrition, of course, the first point you can say, I will give the patient foods on a plastic plate, cups, as well as the spoon to prevent self-harm or injury because the patient may experience aggression in schizophrenia. The other point you can say, uh, I will test the food before giving it to the patient so as to prevent suspicion. So mostly Patients with schizophrenia, because of uh, uh, the delusions that they may have or hallucinations, they may think as well as though this patient, uh, as though you have, uh, um, you want to kill them. Because some patients with hallucinations may have uh, persecution hallucination, where they believe everyone wants to kill them or is after their life. So uh, you need to test the food to show that actually. There is no poison in the food and the food is safe and this promotes uh, nutrition for them to eat. Apart from that, of course, you can say I'll give nutritious meals to the patient to promote the nutritional status. Then the other point you can say, uh, I, will, I will remind the patient to eat, uh, I will remind the patient to eat uh, the food as well as encourage them so as to promote the nutritional status. Then the other point on the same nutrition, you can say, I will open the food in the presence of the patient as well as drinks to prevent suspicion. You can also, of course, talk about uh, promoting a small frequent meals that are attractive to the patient to promote uh, appetite so these are some of the points among many others still that you can put but at least if you are stuck ensure that at least you reach even five points then the next heading is of course behavioral therapy so on behavioral therapy the first point you can say i will involve the patient in daily activities so as to promote uh, good behavior and interaction with the others. The other point, of course, you can say, I will re reward the patient with good behavior so as to promote recovery. Then the other point, of course, you can say, I will punish the patient uh, by rewarding them negatively when they experience or uh, uh, when they emit bad behavior so as to prevent or avoid undesirable behavior. Then apart from that, of course, you can also say I will, uh, I will involve or allow the patient to verbalize their concerns uh, about uh, their behavior so as to uh, provide sufficient interventions. So on behavioral therapy, those are some of the points among others that you can add. Then the next heading is, of course, assertive training. So with assertiveness, this is where, uh, where the, you, you just promote uh, the patient having the sense or ability to have a choice or to choose or be able to say yes when they mean yes or no when they mean no or be able to have a decision. 
uh, with the uh, lack of assertiveness as well for example if uh, uh, you are being controlled you are told to sit you sit you stand you stand you run you run you stop you stop and you do these things without asking a question or without uh, arguing with whatever you are being told it means that you lack assertiveness so you need to, we need to promote assertive behavior in patients because we want them to be reintegrated back into society so with assertive training the first point of course you can say uh, i will encourage the patient to make decisions in terms of uh, the daily activities so as to promote the sense of uh, belonging. Then apart from that, the other point you can say, so I can say I will, uh, I will allow the patient to give an opinion or say how they feel as this promotes see, assertiveness and control of their body. Apart from that, you can say I will encourage the patient to offer ideas and suggestions about their well-being in the hospital as this promotes assertiveness. Then the other point you can say I will encourage the patient uh, to be able to say no without feeling guilty so as to promote assertiveness. You can also say I'll encourage the patient to speak with others as this promotes assertiveness during interaction with others. So these are some of the points that we can put on assertiveness. Then the next heading, of course, is medication. So on medication, of course, you can say I will ensure that the patient is being given the prescribed uh, drugs. And uh, apart from that, you can say, I will always explain to the patient the importance of taking these prescribed drugs such as aloperidol, clopromazine, or diazepam, and many others, so as uh, to promote knowledge to the patient and prevent suspicion. Then apart from that, you can say, I will always explain side effects of the drugs to the patient so as uh, uh, to, uh, to provide sufficient interventions whenever the side effects are experienced. You can also say, I will encourage the patient to report any side effects and I will, in, in, uh, I will inform them of the importance of taking these drugs uh, so as to promote recovery. So these are some of the points that you can put among us. Then you can even say, I will ensure that the patient also swallows the drugs whenever they are prescribed so as to ensure that the patient recovers. Then from there now you can talk about hygiene. So in terms of hygiene, you can say, I will bath the patient to remove, uh, to remove dead epithelia. Uh, on the skin as well as to promote comfort then apart from that you can say i will dress the patient with clean clothes to promote comfort and hygiene you can also talk about um, removing any soiled linen and perform bed making to promote comfort you can say i'll ensure that the patient's hair is well uh, groomed to promote sense of belonging and promote self-esteem. Self you can talk about performing nail care to prevent auto-infections as well as oral care to prevent mouth infections or halitosis. So those are some of the points that we can talk about on this heading. And of course, finally, now we can talk about uh, family uh, therapy. So... On family therapy, uh, of course, you can say, I will involve the family in the care of the patient so as to promote knowledge as well as uh, cooperation. Then apart from that, you can say, I will allow the family to verbalize their concerns uh, of the condition uh, of the condition that the patient has so as to attend to all the concerns and promote cooperation. You can also talk about uh, uh, performing group therapy or family therapy sessions with the patient and the family so that uh, both 
the family and the patient can understand the condition and also this promotes cooperation. Apart from that, of course, you can say I will allow the family and the patient to ask you questions and answer them accordingly so as, um, so as to allay or reduce anxiety. Then, of course, you can say I will explain to the family the need uh, to, to be involved in the patient's care as this promotes see, full recovery. Apart from that, you can say I will encourage the family to frequently visit uh, the patient while in the hospital as this also promotes see, recovery. Then apart from that, you can also talk about in, in, encouraging uh, the family members to understand and accept the condition of the patient as this will promote reintegration of the patient back into their family. So these are some of the points that we can talk about uh, in this particular condition and this is how we can manage schizophrenia. So thank you so much for taking time to go through today's session. Till next time, goodbye.